KUAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust, serving Micronesia since 1938. Matson celebrating 25 years of commitment to Guam, Micronesia, and the CNMI. Cars Plus Hyundai, home of the Kona Electric Vehicle, an electric heart with an SUV soul. Test drive yours today at Cars Plus. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it, and King's Restaurant, serving your local breakfast, lunch, and dinner favorites for over 45 years. Coming up on Primetime, Nesha Lakanto reports from Tamuning, where a new homeless shelter has been opened. Plus, funding for a local employment assistance program is coming together, and a booster shot clinic was held down in Humatak this morning. Daniel Perez was in the Southern Village and brings you that report. Afade Guam, I'm Jason Salas. There is now relief from the long waiting list at the pandemic homeless shelter over in Mighty. A second facility has opened up over in Tamuning to take in those who were turned away from the first one. Nestor Locanto has tonight's top story. I'm here at the Tamuning Plaza Hotel, which is the site of the new homeless shelter. We were told we were not allowed inside for privacy reasons, but we did manage to speak to a couple of folks who are um, approved applicants for the facility. Janice Cruz and Robert Paris say they applied at the Global Dorm in Mighty, but there was no room at the time. I appreciate it very much because I'm being fed breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and I'm actually sleeping in a bed after almost six years. It's a good place. Um, before I was staying here as a client, I was just going places to places, abandoned buildings, sidewalks, um, bus stops, and anywhere that I could sleep. The new COVID emergency shelter has been dubbed Lehang Sinafu, or Safe Shelter. It provides another 40 rooms for the homeless, an obvious improvement to living on the streets. Being homeless without really no resource or support, uh, you know, living off of the very basic like federal funding assistance and food stamp, it's, it's hard you know, when you don't have anybody to call out to. And when you have people that are here willing to shelter you and feed you, you know, because that's the very basic you, things we need to sustain life. But we can only appreciate it unless, you know, you can have other options and right now it's the options for me came to this point so it had helped me to open my eyes on a lot of things because before i i never knew how to do anything for myself you know it was always my mom doing it or if i ask questions to my friends or whatever they're the one so it feels good to know that i could actually do something for myself and for my mom the second shelter comes more than a year after the first one was opened. The lieutenant governor led a task force that tapped Catholic Social Services to once again manage it. Meanwhile, Maniello will conduct case management operations focused on life skills and employment training. Gura funded the program through the CARES Act provided by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. But Paris might sum it up best for the homeless applicants. I'm just thankful I, I found a place. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. Elsewhere, funding for the local employment assistance program known as LEAP is about halfway there. The governor's pledged $25 million from the American Rescue Plan funds to help prop up struggling businesses. And now it's up to the legislature to come up with the other half. Tourism Committee Chairperson Amanda Shelton is planning a public hearing soon on a bill to appropriate the other $25 million from the general fund. GHRA President Mary Rhodes encourages companies to turn out and support it, especially those from the hard-hit tourism industry. There's a huge loss um, that everybody's expecting to continue to have through 2022. So it's really important we stabilize our economy and lay the groundwork for economic recovery and help bring the jobs back and uh, specifically within the tourism industry. Jay Merrill of Market Research Associates, also an optional tour company owner, says they did a study which shows a 66% drop off in business tax revenue between the comparison year of 2017 and 2020. What we discovered was pretty shocking. What we discovered was if we took the median of all businesses on the island, tourism businesses were hurt uh, by a factor of one third more. But it is important to see what we can do to bridge the period of time where folks are right now experiencing tremendous hardship to when visitors can start to come back. 
Steve Kasperbauer of Alupang Beach Club and John Uggen of Karetan Karabau are just two examples. We're just really optimistic still because throughout this whole process, uh, Guam has been a very, uh, I would say, we have our different opinions, but I think we've been united as Team Guam. Yes, the business is business, but with all its employees, and those employees are the people of Guam, then, you know, we're going to have a hard time making a full recovery or a semi-civil recovery because it affects everybody on the island. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Licanto. In other news, DOC Chief Joe Carbolito confirms an investigation is now underway after a complaint was filed against Warden Alan Borja. Carbolito could not say the nature of the complaint other than it was filed last week by a staffer from the Guam Behavioral Health and Wellness Center. Moving on in our rundown, the Mayor's Council of Guam, in partnership with Public Health, held another booster clinic today down in the southern village of Humatec. Daniel Perez was there and files this report. This morning, we made our way down south to see how the booster clinic was going at the Humatec Mayor's Office. Village Mayor Johnny Kinata. It's kind of slow down here. as you, uh, I, can't, I can't tell you how how slow it is but it's pretty slow for now um, um i don't know most of my people got shot moderna and even though the clinic was held in the southern village residents from other villages showed up to get their booster shots as well i, I spoke to one from zonia and one from marito and um i'm pretty sure most of them are from marito uh, i think only three from umatic so far with the booster clinic taking place around the island mayor kinata encourages island residents to avail the opportunity now they're using the mayor's office to give the shots, so make that opportunity to come and get the shots. Nobody's going to be pushed away. You know, if you're, you're, you're willing to come down this far to get a booster shot instead of waiting and get a line in a long line, this is the best place to come. Because there's no line. You know, you just come, you, know, you put your name on the paper and then get shot and then wait 15 minutes and you're gone. Malesu resident Shirley Lumbang accompanied Bert Lumbang. It's the, the third booster shot and he has the, the Pfizer. So it was required, and plus he's 60, is 76 and sickly. So, of course, we have to get the shots, you know, be safe. 20 residents came for their Pfizer booster shot. The next booster clinic will be held at the Hoggett Gym on October 20. The clinic will be open from 8.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. You can schedule your appointment by calling your respective village mayor's office. As we reported, the Pfizer booster shot is for those who have completed their two-dose series with the Pfizer vaccine at least six months ago and are 65 years and older. Daniel Perez reporting for Guam's News Network. Well, let us shift focus now and consider some regional news now as our Tomas Manglotnia is live up in Saipan with the latest on the special election held over the weekend. Hafede and good evening, Tomas. What have you got? Good evening, Jason. Good evening, Jason. Thanks for uh, uh, introducing us here on Saipan. We're reporting live from the Multipurpose Center in Susupi, where votes were tabulated for the special election for Precinct 3, also where Karina Magofnia was certified as the next representative for the House of Representatives on Saipan. Here's more of our story. I have a long road ahead of me, but I am ready to take that challenge on, and I am ready to work with the elected leaders at the legislature, both Democrats and Republican and Independent. So, Representative-elect Karina Magofnia, moments after the results were certified, placing her over the top with 1,217 votes in Precinct 3 special election on Saipan. My main priority is to understand what my resources are because I can't plan anything without knowing what my resources are, both financially and just manpower and stuff like that. So I look forward to working with my team. Republican candidate Grace Sablan Vingahe receiving just 808 votes. She said in part in a statement over the weekend, I extend my congratulations to Karina. It was a truly a fulfilling experience to run in an election which fielded female candidates only. It was a moment in our history that further proves the glass ceiling has been broken. Democratic Party Chair Nola Hicks says the people have spoken. Came out to vote during early voting. You know, it's like we said, you know, show your power at the ballot box. You know, nobody knows where your pencil goes. So I think uh, this is a clear message that people of the CNMI have had enough. They're ready to move forward. They're ready to get back to business. And we're just excited to deliver. We're so happy for Karina. Do you have a message 
And now we are joined live with a uh, representative elect, Karina Magolfnia, representing Precinct 3. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I wanted to ask you, what are your reflections as you are uh, filling the seat left by the uh, passing of late representative Ivan Blanco? Sure. Well, first and foremost, I would like to extend my deep condolences and sympathies to the families of I uh, our rep, representative Ivan Blanco. Uh, you know, as I said before, Ivan was a great statesman and he was very well loved by his colleagues and the community. And um, as I reflect back on this, I hope to uh, fulfill the seat with, with a lot of um, trust and confidence to our people and let them know that I will continue the work of Ivan. Um, I would like to check on what he was working on, what he left off, and see how I can continue that work. But I'd also like to to take you know some time to do work on my own and see how I can fulfill those to the people that I've made promises to. The number one priority is to make sure that whatever decisions and actions that that I make is going to be well represented for the entire community of Precinct 3. All right, thank you so much, Karina. I appreciate you joining us live here. And again, reporting from Saipan outside of the multi-purpose center in Susupi, I'm Tomas Maglonia for KUM News. Thank you. All right, thanks so much, Tomas. Good job reporting that. And of course, we at KUM extend our, our congratulations to the representative elect up in Saipan. Speaking of the CNMI, freelance photographer David Butterfield was arrested and is detained at the DOC on Saipan after he left his room at the quarantine facility at Kanoa Resort on Saipan, ditching the full period of the government-mandated quarantine. He also shared on social media that he is unvaccinated. Yes, Mr. Butterfield uh, apparently uh, left quarantine uh, last night, and um, we're able to um, tra track down and, uh, you know, our base on our uh, guest count. And we re uh, realized, uh, as well as reviewing the camera, that he did... Um, um, left premises. So immediately we activated our uh, law enforcement uh, officers as well as our CCC contact investigators and uh, through uh, communication with uh, CEO Munya, myself and the team, uh, we uh, were able to um, track uh, the gentleman down um, and and uh, bring him in. Uh, this is a violation of leaving quarantine site. It's, um, it's a serious violation. Unvaccinated travelers who fail to present a negative PCR test and are unvaccinated have to quarantine for a week and a half at a government facility. Villa Gomez shared Butterfield remains in custody and the task force is working with the CNMI Attorney General on the matter. Public Information Officer Adrian Pangolinen told KUM News, quote, he's since been apprehended and was transferred to the Department of Corrections. He later says more details will be provided forthcoming. Let's get back to doing some Guam news now as a 61-year-old man is in ICU at Naval Hospital in Nagani Heights after being shot twice with a bow and arrow to the back. Facing attempted murder is Joaquin San Nicolas Guile Jr. Police responded to an assault, according to court documents, at a home in Mingilao on Sunday. There they found the victim with an open puncture wound and an arrow lodged in his lower back area. Guile was identified by a witness as the person who shot the victim. He lives on a container home on the property. Inside, police found a pair of bows and 28 arrows. Guile admitted to shooting an intruder, but after the second shot, he realized it was a relative that was in disguise, was stalking him, and allegedly tried to kill him on previous occasions. Now, aside from the attempted murder charge, Guile additionally faces charges of aggravated assault. He's also on pretrial release for a 2019 case involving terrorizing and use of a deadly weapon. In that matter, a judge ordered that he not possess any such deadly weapons. Well, before we go to break, we invite you as always to voice your view on our social media platforms with our daily question. And today we ask you, have you had issues purchasing things at the store due to the widely known shipping delays and how are they impacting you and your family? We're going to share the responses on the link tomorrow. So make sure to check that out. And a breaking story into the newsroom is after serving as the CEO of Guahan Academy, Academy Charter School for three years, Dr. Judy Wanpat has confirmed that she is resigning for personal reasons. While Juan Pat is leaving the charter school, she says she will continue to serve in the community as a victim's advocate reaching out Guam, among other organizations. The charter school's board appointed its dean of secondary education, Linda Hernandez Avia, as school principal. They're also in the process of hiring an assistant principal. Now, Dr. Juan Pat's last day to serve as the CEO for the home of the starfish is on Wednesday, November 3rd. Please stay tuned. There is much more prime time. Keep watching and keep streaming as KUM returns after this.
wherever life takes you, we're always here for you. Calvo's Insurance. Count on us for life. My name is Samantha Titano. So I'm actually in a, the executive director of a nonprofit. So just people who are looking for a different pathway that's going to lead to a secure job, uh, but isn't necessarily thought of as the traditional path. You know, the, there's a ton of opportunities on this island for the trades. Uh, lots of jobs uh, available and people are always hiring for them. Uh, and you can, you know, if you become a skilled and reliable worker, you can definitely move up in the construction industry here. Yaman, reintroducing the Tumon pans with plenty rice. Every day of the week, Tumon Jamaican Grill has a special for you. For 20 bucks, Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, features jerk chicken and ribs. Thursdays, the sweet and tangy Jamango barbecue ribs. Friday, check out what we caught for you in our fried local catch. And finally, our weekend family platter is only $50. That's nine bucks off. Yaman, Tumon pans. Call to order 647 3000 or 4000. Yaman, Jamaican. It's a special delivery to your inbox every week with your KUAM News Roundup, program advisories, and promotions. Sign up for the weekly KUAM Digital Digest today on KUAM.com. GDOE will host three virtual community input sessions this week on Zoom. The Policy Review and Strategic Planning Committee will provide updates to the draft strategic plan covering curriculum, parent engagement, student safety, facilities, and finance. Parents will have the opportunity to ask questions and express concerns to education leaders at these sessions. They're scheduled by districts Wednesday through Friday, all at 6 p.m. It's also going to be live streamed on GDOE's Facebook page. Check out KUM.com for the schedule. Career Tech High down in Hoggett resumed in-person instruction a month ago and reports that their second school year has been going well, despite some of the challenges posed by the pandemic. Here's Isaiah Ogg. After a month of resuming face-to-face -face learning, Career Tech High Academy Charter School, or C-Tech principal Dr. Juan Flores says that operations have been progressing smoothly, but there are some bumps in the road. It's been pretty good. It's been pretty challenging. We always have to remind students about social distancing. They check in and... Uh, check their temperatures every morning and sanitize all the time, uh, wash their hands. Um, but I think for the most part, those students who come to school, they're really glad to be in school. Volleyball court gets used, the activity is, is usually pretty active. Unlike some of the schools across the island, Career Tech High Academy Charter School hasn't reported a single COVID case since the start of the school year. We haven't had any positive cases in the school, but we've had students who've had to stay home because there have been positive cases in their family. So there have been contacts of contacts, uh, but it hasn't been our students themselves who are tested positive. Although no COVID cases have been reported on campus, some students have never returned to classes for in-person instruction. We're juggling, you know, having face-to-face -face education uh, instruction with having some students online, sometimes at the same time. We have some students whose families have chosen not to have them come back to school, for now um, and so we have some different modifications like in the classes I teach um, the classes are an hour and 45 minutes an hour and 15 minutes rather and so for the last half hour I finish up with the face-to-face -face students and I start with the online students and then if I need to I meet with them after school again. Flores pointed out that most students have been able to stay on track with assignments he also noted that no COVID vaccine mandate is in place for students. We will be following the protocols from public health to have, um, as soon as we get it started, a certain percentage of the students um, tested randomly uh, if their parents give us permission to do that or when their parents give us permission to do that. CTEC has yet to receive approval from public health on the COVID-19 screening testing plan. Flores noted that most employees are fully vaccinated. Reporting for Guam News Network, Guahusi Isaiah Ogden. As Police Week winds down, the 2020 Unit Citation for Excellence Award went to the Special Operations Division at GPD. These brave individuals work around the clock to protect our community. Anna Devonzo has more. Roughly 35 officers are assigned to GPD's Special Operations Division. They've worked 12-hour shifts for a year straight. These divisions include SWAT, Detention, Recreational and Boating, Civilian Volunteer Police Reserve, and K-9. While the work is taxing, they do it for family. I just try to drive home that we work for the people. We don't work for ourselves because the people are our family. 
Since the start of the pandemic, the Special Operations Division's duties have only increased. There was a lot going on, um, so many taskings. Uh, we had beach patrol. We had to maintain the beaches because when people would need to vent and go to the beach just to be on their own, we had to control that too because of the social distancing and the amount of people. Many times their duties included transporting sick people who they knew were COVID-19 positive. And the challenges were us going out with public health to protect them, first identifying where all these people are, these people being possible um, people who are sick of the, of the virus. The sacrifices and the risks the Special Operation Division perform daily for their community make them well deserving of the 2020 Unit Citation Award. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Hannah Devonzo. And over in Timuning, GMH is suspending a longtime Halloween tradition, citing safety precautions during the pandemic. The hospital will not be offering free x-rays of Halloween candy this year. The hospital said it does so with, quote, great sadness and hopes and prays it'll be able to welcome everyone back in 2022. GMH also wishes everyone a safe and happy Halloween. Sports is next. Stay tuned. Your community calendar is brought to you by Taco Bell. Whether it's your first meal or your fourth meal, we've got you covered. Taco Bell, live Moss. Say hello to the First Hawaiian Bank mobile app, where you get smart insights into your finances so you can make smart decisions with your money. With a daily personalized feed, you can compare your monthly income to spending. That's better. Discover where your money is actually going you might be surprised. Be what's essential and what isn't. The more you use the app, the smarter it gets. With insights from the First Hawaiian Bank mobile app, it all starts with yes. 100% truck, 100% Jeep. Experience next level off-roading on your new Jeep Gladiator. The most capable off-road mid-size pickup truck crafted for adventure. Equipped with best-in-class towing capacity, legendary 4x4 Jeep capability, and backed by Guam's only lifetime powertrain warranty. Drive home in a 2021 Jeep Gladiator today. Starting as low as $315 per paycheck during Jeep Adventure Days. Visit carsplusguam.com to get pre-approved online today. Terms and conditions apply. Cars Plus, driven by you. Taco Bell is so good and so cheap. I know, right? I wonder why. What if they know we're broke? What if they're trying to be the good guys? Ah, thanks Taco Bell! KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. The East of Football League kicked off with the JFK Islanders hosting the Southern High Dolphins Friday night. Southern came out establishing their running game. Number 25, Isaiah Taposnia, with the spin move, takes it right up the middle through the Islanders' defense for the first touchdown of the game. 6-0 Dolphins after the PAT was no good. Jaron Leon Guerrero with that hit stick. Leon Guerrero with great timing on the play to break up the pass. Islanders forced to punt. Southern's chance to Stevis with the first down carry here. Josiah Quintaniza sets up Southern in good field position. Kintaniza with the toss right, fakes the reverse, and gets tackled inside the five-yard line. Jacoby Kanata with the touchdown-saving tackle for JFK. Dante Salas would punch it in for the 12-0 Dolphins lead. Point after attempt was no good. Another miscue on offense by JFK puts Southern in prime position for another score. Josiah Kintaniza would get in for the short touchdown run. Southern would score their last points of the game off a of safety and go on to win 20-6. The Lady Tritons Women's Rugby Sevens Tournament kicked off at the UOG field in Mingilao. Joining the University of Guam Tritons Women's Rugby team are High Performance, Paratotu, and Hybrids. High Performance took the first game of the day 34-0 over Paratotu. 
The Tritons lost their first game to Hybrids 7-0. UOG opened its first matches in history of the institution with three losses. The Lady Tritons hit the field with a thin roster as several members weren't able to suit up for the opener. High performance defeated UOG 42-0. UOG's third loss of the tournament was to Paratodu 32-0. Other scores, Paratodi 14-5 winners over Hybrids. High Performance got the win over Hybrids 34-7. The tournament will conclude Saturday with the following schedule. 10 in the morning, the number one seed High Performance taking on number four seed UOG Tritons. 10-30, the number two seed Paratodi will be taking on third seed Hybrids. At 11.30, the third place match will be taking place between the losers of the semifinals. And then at noon, the championship match will go down between the winners of the semifinals. All matches will be played at the UOG Rugby Field. No spectators or fans will be allowed inside the playing area. All games will be shown live on the UOG Athletic YouTube channel. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. You are everything that matters to me, and I promise to do whatever it takes to keep you healthy, to be comfortable, and to be free. I love you as long as we're together. I'll always make sure that home will always be our best place to breathe. Half a day. Hi. That will be $20, please. I forgot my Mobile Smiles Drivers Rewards card. No worries. You can now use your registered mobile number to earn points. Can I use my mobile number to redeem rewards? Sure. Just show us your photo ID or driver's license. That's easy. And now here's this week's Guam Safe Certified Profile. Guam Safe and WTTC Safe Travel Certified Program Showcase is brought to you in partnership with the Guam Visitors Bureau. Well, half a day. My name is Ron Laguanya II, and I am the captain and owner of Guam Fishing Expeditions. Guam Fishing Expeditions has been around for approximately four years. I started off working on boats, all these big boats behind me, and I'm an avid fisherman. I've competed for fishing and spear fishing for the island, and I decided to pass on the knowledge. I enjoy teaching people how to fish along the way. It brings me joy to see people enjoy what I have accomplished. So I decided to take it as a business and share the knowledge with all of us. That's why I'm here. We wanted to let our customers, local, military and tourists know that we have taken the extra steps to ensure the health and safety while aboard our vessel. As a small business, it means we are helping our economy and our island rebound from COVID by ensuring the health and safety of all of us. Guam Safe and WTTC Safe Travel Certified Program Showcase is brought to you in partnership with the Guam Visitors Bureau. Here are now your birthday shout outs. Happy birthday on this Monday, October 18th to Megan Boswell, who celebrates a happy 25th birthday today. Megan, your friends and family wish you a happy 25th. Matthew Anthony Chong Castro, happy 19th birthday, our big boy. Thank you for being so patient, kind, respectful, understanding, helpful, and loving to your younger siblings. We love you unconditionally, and that means forever. With so much love from Mom, Dad, Jace, Jude, Arya, Ariel, Manuel, Amelia, and Thomas. Reese Alexander continues to celebrate birthday number four today, and happy blessed birthday, sonny boy. Please continue to grow, learn, and be loved, for you are loved unconditionally. Conditionally, and then you get the heart emoji and the birthday cake emoji. <laughs> awesome. Happy birthday to Carlos Herrera, aka Hitman. Happy birthday to you, the best that ever was, the best there is, and the best that ever will be. <laughs> you know what's up with that. We love you so much and have a blessed birthday. Love Mimi, Carlos, Gregory, Carson Miguel, and Marlon. Kenny Ann, happy sweet 16th birthday to you from your Meeks and Susuiko families. And happy birthday to Vivian Pangilinan Fukui. 
Happy birthday to my special mother with lots of love from the family. That's an awesome collection of Guamanians. Each one of them is special. Each one of them is truly, truly amazing. And we're very pleased to have them as members of our community. So, if you see them online, shoot them a note and wish them happy birthday. We're out of time. We'll look for you tomorrow night. Beyond Our Borders is brought to you by KFC and the Medical City, where patients are partners. Hoffa everyone. Nestor Lecanto here with another.